Hello, and welcome to another day of Advent of Code. In this one, we're going to be solving day 13, which involves coordinates and folding and yeah. Uh, so this is what our input's going to look like. It's going to be a set of XY coordinates, and we are going to be executing some folds, and you can imagine them as paper that folds either vertically or horizontally. Um, they do note, uh, and I forgot to put it in here, that the coordinates count from y0 downwards and x0 across. Oh, it's going to be backwards. x0 across and y0 downwards um, on this. So you can imagine 0, 0 is going to be up in your top left, and it will increase down that diagonal. Um, so uh, let's start by how I would parse this problem. So the first thing that we want to do is separate out the instructions from the actual points. And so we have points and instructions equals input s dot split. And we're going to split on that double blank line that's there. The blank line is going to be two new line characters side by side right here. So that'll get these separated out. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is set up all of these points. The way I represented these points is a set. And the problem states that when you fold, sometimes two points will line up and they will just become one point. And a set's really nice for that because it eliminates any duplicates. So we're gonna have, um, actually I'm gonna call this points S because we're gonna use points as our variable name here as a set. Or line in points S dot split lines, just a very simple parsing here. X, S, Y, S equals line dot split on a comma and points dot add int X, S. It's y s and two. Cool. So that should get us our points there. We run this. See that we get a, a set of coordinates. Now this is not super readable, <laughs> and so what you might want to do to make this slightly more readable is write yourself a printing function, and this will come in handy for part two. So let's just do that right now. I'll make it kind of easier to see what's going on. So I'm going to make a print points, which is going to take our points as a set of tuple int int one, two, and return none. Import this so that we can use those nice annotations. And basically what we want to figure out is what the largest x and y value is. That way we can plot all the points on it. And so for that, we're going to say max x equals max x for x, y. We don't care about this in points, and we want to get the max y as well. Max y for y in points. And then we basically just want a double for loop that's going to print these. So for y in range 0 to max y plus 1, we need to make sure we include the last value. And for x in range 0 max x plus 1. And then we want to print either uh, some sort of character if it's in our points set. Otherwise, we want to print like a space, some non-character. So for that, I did if x, y in points, then we print maybe this. Otherwise, we print a space. A note here that I'm using end equals empty string. This will prevent it from uh, writing a new line after it prints these. But we still want a new line after the row, so we can just call print here. Uh, or you could do print empty string. but. This will print just a line for you. And so that should get us print points working. So let's do that instead, print points. And this is kind of what our input starts looking like. Cool. Okay, so now once we've done that, we need to execute these folds. So for line in instructions dot split lines. And for part one, it actually asks us only to execute the very first fold. Uh, so when I implemented this, I actually just implemented all of them at once, but put a cheaty little break at the end of my for loop here. That way it only executes the first one. And then when I wanted to run part two, I just did, I just removed the break here and that gave me the, the answer there. So how do we do this fold? For the fold we have to parse first. So what I did for parsing is uh, instruction s and num ns equals line dot split on an equals and then to figure out which axis it is I just grab the last character of this so axis equals instruction s negative one oops there's capital there uh, and we want n equals int and s Okay, so now that we know the two axes, we know how we have to either flip them vertically 
or flip them horizontally. So if axis is equal to x, we're flipping along x equals 5 is a vertical line, so we are swapping the x's over. Uh, Lf axis equals y. Else raise uh, assertion error expected axis. Just to make sure that in case we did something wrong, we have a little bit of an error message that's going to help us out here. Okay, and for this, we need to uh, adjust our points to be in the other axis. And so when I thought about this, uh, you kind of can imagine a line segment like this, and we have our fold here, and we might have our point here. Let's say this is the x direction. Um, so the fold, you can imagine as a vertical line, the point exists here. And when we fold, we basically want to take this portion here and fold it over onto the other side. So the P will end up somewhere over here. Um, and maybe to make this less, a little bit easier to draw <laughs> or to explain. So this, this P is going to end up like right here, uh, basically the same distance between these two, uh, but on the other side there. And so to compute the distance between these two, you first will do P minus F. That'll get you the distance between. Uh, and then you need to subtract P minus F from F. So we got to move back that amount. Uh, so new pause will be F minus P minus F. And if you distribute that and simplify it, it's the same as saying new pause equals two times F minus P. And so that's kind of that's kind of the math to figure out here, the, the, the real, just the only trick of this problem basically. Um, and we just need to handle that in both directions. And so for x, we're going to do points. We're just going to reassign the set. I'm just going to do a set comprehension, which will do this real quickly. Oops. For x, y, and points. And in the when we're flipping the x direction, we keep the y the same, but we need to do this logic. Um, and this logic is only going to happen if p is on the folded side. If it's on the other side, we can just ignore it. So um, x if x is less than n. So this is kind of our, you know, we don't we don't change, imagine there's a point over here, we don't change it at all. Otherwise, we need to do this logic here. Uh, n minus x minus n, or 2n, 2n minus x, is the other way to write this. Uh, so that's that logic there. And for part two, it's very similar, but in the other direction. So instead of for this, we are doing it for y. Uh, and that should implement our fold. And part one asks us to print how many points are left after doing one fold. So we do one fold here. And if we do print len points, since it's a set, we can just ask how many points are in our set. And that'll tell us how many are assigned. Uh, and I have a syntax error. Where is my syntax error? Oh, we're missing a comma here. And that means we're missing a comma here as well. Uh, oops. Okay, so this is after part one. There are 17 points set. You can see that that is our expected value here. And this is what it prints after part one. Um, and to get to part two, we just remove the break here and run that again. And you see we get our square, and that's what we expect to see from our sample problem. Now, your actual code will produce some set of characters in ASCII art, and then you'll submit that set of characters as your answer. But anyway, that's, um, that's day 13. Hopefully you found this useful, and I'll see you around for the next day.